So when we talk about air quality index, it basically represents the overall situation of air pollution in a particular area. So when you say air quality index of Delhi is 100, so it basically represents that the air quality situation in that particular area. So there are the different ranges of air quality index. Uh, for example, if you will look at the Central Pollution Control Board's website, so uh, the air quality index when it falls, it shows the value of 0 to 50. They, they say that it's in, a good, it's in a good condition, which basically shows that people can move around freely, do outdoor activities, the air pollution levels are really low. From 50 to 100, it shows that it is in a satisfactory condition which again shows that you can roam around freely, have outdoor activities, uh, you know, as, as the rating or the number of the a AQI increases. So the, uh, so the pollution turns from good to the severe category gradually, which basically shows how much impact the air pollution is going to have on an individual's health and also with regard to the vulnerable population. When we talk about vulnerable population, so there are the categories, the impact that is being observed on the people suffering from respiratory problems such as asthma, from heart problems, or you know elderly or the younger children, etc. So similarly, it also talks about the exposure. So when the uh, say when the air quality index turns to the severe category, which is the extreme category of the air quality index, where even the uh, at this point even the healthier people will start to have respiratory problem because of the air pollutants which are present in the ambient air. So uh, when we talk about AQI, first we need to understand about national ambient air quality standards. So as per the Central Pollution Control Board, which is a regular, which is you know a main uh, monitoring agency in India. So they normally monitor eight pollutants uh, at the monitoring station. So AQI is calculated on the basis of the daily average concentration for these pollutants along with the, their impact on the health conditions. So a sub indices is being calculated for each of these eight pollutants and a maximum sub index is represented as an AQI. At some of the monitoring stations, it might be possible that, uh, you know, all the eight pollutants are not monitored. In that scenario, they take a reading of at least three pollutants in which it is mandatory to have at least one pollutant as PM10 or PM2.5. So I'm going to give you here an example how, how, how should we calculate AQI. So, say if there is a reading of a PM 2.5 or PM 10. So in case of a PM 2.5 and PM 10, since we do not have any India specific study which mentions about what would be the health impact at the different exposure levels of PM 10 or 2.5. Also we do consider that looking at the Indian conditions based on the different studies, there is a high background level which is there present in all the Indian cities. When we say background level, background level basically means if you shut down all the sources in a city, you will still have that much concentration of a pollutant. So on the basis of this, uh, to calculate the air quality index, simply the national ambient air quality standard of 60 microgram per meter cube is taken into consideration. So when you say good air quality index, so in that case, the PM, PM10 value would be around uh, 30 microgram per meter cube. When you say it is a satisfactory, so it would be at the PM10 concentration level of a 60 microgram per meter cube. When you say it is moderate, so it is at a PM10 level of a 90 microgram per meter cube. So that is how we calculate sub indices for the other pollutants as well. Depending upon whether we have their exposure and the health related curves, or not and what is the situation internationally and what are the practices internationally being followed. When we talk about monitoring station, first we need to understand the objectives of the monitoring station. So we have a national ambient monitoring program, so which has multiple objectives which can be broadly classified into three. So first objective is to monitor population exposure. So these monitoring stations are placed as per the different population density within the city when we design a monitoring station. Uh, the second objective primarily focuses on measuring the air quality near hotspots or near the sources of pollution. 
so these sort of monitoring stations are located maybe near to the industrial area near to the traffic junctions in order to understand the hot spot concentrations the third type of a monitoring stations are normally located you know outside the city to understand the background pollution that is coming within the city from the outside sources so when you talk about air quality monitoring stations or when you when you report about the air quality concentration in a city on the basis of the monitoring net, monitoring station so it's always a good practice to take average of all the monitoring stations which are there in the city not just rely only on one monitoring station